CMAX is a, a nootropic, uh, mainly in neuroprotective effects. And the main ways that I think it works is it's got dopaminogenic, dopaminogenic, I can't say that word, dopa, and serotoninogenic. How do you say those words, doctor? I'm sorry. Dopaminer uh, dopaminergic and serotonergic. Right. So basically, they, you know, those things increase your mood and behavior and, uh, you know, dope. Any most of the stimulants people take that that really make them feel good and get them into zone usually have some effects like that. Um, this one also uh, CMAX increases BDNF, which is brain derived neurofactor, and it, that does a lot of things. Like the the list is super never ending, but the main thing that I cherry picked for this discussion was that it increases BDNF, which uh, helps increase short term and long term memory in the hippocampus, which is part of your brain that is associated with like learning and memory, but also, and this is where things get interesting for my use, uh, spatial learning, the so motor patterning. And uh, so without, that would be something that like motor learning guys is something that's, you know, you're using your body to do skills, right? So think about juggling, think about a deadlift, think about uh, improving your sprinting mechanics, think about playing the piano, a guitar, there's a wide range of different types of spatial learning and motor learning things between fine motor skills and kind of gross motor skills. But I found with CMAX, it really <laughs> does kind of a magic trick in the middle zone. I'm not talking about something that's gross, like a, a deadlift or squat or something super technical, like learning to write calligraphy or with your non-dominant hand. But for something like, you know, martial arts skills, um, juggling, playing a musical instrument or anything that's like dancing would be a great one. Um, I've used it before some sessions that involve some of those things. And it's, I can tell you some of the effects are really cool. But the main things that I don't know, doctor, I cannot find much information about the negative side effects, contraindications, like uh, dosage is all over the freaking chart. So, I mean, let's, let's get into it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. See, so, I mean, you've kind of nailed the, uh, some of the kind of, you know, key, key benefits of CIMAX. Um, it's the reason why it exhibits these effects on the areas that you're talking about is because it's actually a, um, it's a fragment of, uh, the adrenocorticotropic hormone or ACTH. Um, and what they've done, they developed it in Russia, like back in like the eighties sometime. And um, they did it actually for these neuroprotective and cognitive enhancing effects of ACTH. But they wanted to really, um, because ACTH is part of the whole, uh, uh, the, the, adrenal, um, the uh, adrenal hormone complex that, you know, drives uh, stress responses, basically. Um, when, we, when we have a lot of ACTH on board, then we generally will have high cortisol levels. And so what they did was they isolated the fragment of ACTH. Uh, it's like the four through 10 amino acids of it. It's, very, it's a very short peptide. Um, and it, that then takes away the effects of um, activating the adrenocorticotropic axis um, without it. You can activate it without having these cortisol effects, these stress effects. Mm. So we get all these, these great neuro, neuroactive effects of ACTH the central nervous system, which are isolated there without having the peripheral issues um, that we'd have if we, you know, um, had just adrenal corticotropin hormone injected into us or, you know, we gave her a little snort. So, so the, um, uh, are you using, are you using the intranasal then or are you using um, uh, uh, the sub Q? Uh, I've tried the sub Q, including IM with that as well. And it seems to me that the nasal preparation works better. I, I don't know. I, I would thought the injectable would be comparable, but for whatever reason, the nasal one works really well. Absolutely. Because um, when we take things intranasally, we actually get kind of a little bit of a direct line to uh, across the blood brain barrier. So we can get the stuff into the brain. And when we're doing it through sub-Q or IM injections, we're actually circulating it, obviously, and then we have to get it, you know, it kind of gets distributed everywhere around the body. So the first pass when we go through the, the nostrils um, will be into the brain. And so the benefits are actually realized much greater with uh, intranasally than it is with um, the injectable. And that's because there are, um, there's enzymatic processing and a bunch of processing assessing that occurs with injectable ACTH or fragments, um, which is a kind of a good thing considering we don't want a lot of stuff circulating around, you know, driving stress responses. So um, the fragment 
when we isolate it to the brain, we get these uh, neurotropic effects, like you said, increased BDNF. Uh, we get, you know, increased uh, modulation of, of neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin. And mainly this is an effect of um, uh, the CMAX's um, um, uh, influence, I guess you could say, on uh, mono, uh, monoamine oxidases. So it allows oh. it a little bit, yeah. Now, the good thing about CMAX, which makes it super duper safe, and you're right, the safety profile is relatively good. You can't find anything that's really bad about it, um, is that it's a relatively short half-life on that effect. Although the BDNF and neurogenic factors, like the neuro neurite growth stuff, um, occur much longer than that. But it's got a relatively short half-life, and it doesn't build up in the system as a result. So we don't end up with, you know, a situation where we're, you know... Um, causing problems with monoamine oxidase, like we would say with methylene blue or these kind of things, because it's not circulating. It's just kind of doing its job in the brain, short acting. And then we get the long acting effects, like I said, on the, on the, um, the neurotropic effects. So it does help balance um, dopamine and serotonin. It upregulates, you know, um, synthesis of enzymes that produce it. It also um, increases receptor sensitivity, according to some studies in like neuroscience letters, um, and they also think that now that it helps balance norepinephrine in the brain and oh. um, that also helps with focus and all those you know, skill acquisition and everything that you've kind of mentioned. So you kind of get, kind of get a double whammy with this stuff with skill acquisition. I love that you mentioned that by the way, um, because not only are you getting the motivation, motivational aspects from dopamine to be able to focus on a thing over and over repetitively that you need for skills acquisition. Mm -hmm. But also you're driving those brain processes, like, like you mentioned, that allow us to acquire and consolidate skills, you know, much quicker and uh, with much more effectiveness. And then we also get the whole, you know, reward feeling because of the dopamine um, throughout that process. So it's kind of a, you know, when we learn it, we get a dopamine effect, but then we're also driving the dopamine effect for a short period of time, at least with the CMAX up the nostrils. So, yeah. So I usually use it um, right before like a skill uh, mm -hmm. session, and that's only like maybe three or four times a week. Um, when I'm focused on trying something new or if I'm kind of in the zone where I know I can make the most of it, I don't really use it for resistance training. I just I feel like I would rather save it for, for what it's best for. I don't really find it's – yeah, you do kind of get like this like, oh, you feel pretty good for – you know, it's it's pretty short period of time, like five minutes. You're like, oh, okay. It's nothing like that you would fiend on like a, like a recreational drug, but you do get a little bit of an uplift. But the crazy thing is like I do something called rope flow, which is it's a perfect like medium skill type thing. That, by the way. For I, I can't. Watching, I've been watching Antoine do it too, and I'm like, God, I got to get those ropes. Oh, you would like them. It's, it's, it's really fun to do. And when I use it before certain practices there, it's magic. It's just like, all of a sudden my body will do something and be like, well, how did I just, what? It's just like, I would just do something new and I'd be like, holy crap. Okay. Well, that's different. And I, if it was just a one-off doctor, I, I wouldn't know, but this is consistently, I've noticed this is pretty regular that this can happen. So I'm pretty impressed with it in that regard. And uh, it doesn't seem – since a skill session isn't going to be – it's more like uh, spaced versus masked practice is typically what you do for skills and certain types of strength, grease the groove type things. So these sessions are only like, you know, 20 to 40 minutes. So right beforehand, you know, right after I've kind of gotten warmed up, it hits quick. I kind of feel it. Some skills kind of moving around where I want, and then I'm done. So – it's about a 45 minute window. That's I think it's about right. And that's actually, that's actually bang on. Um, in fact, actually how you just described the, the, the kind of dopamine, you know, Oh, that feels pretty good. It's that transient. It's like literally like minutes. It's not long. It's not a long time. Um, no. and, and when it comes to that, what you just mentioned, you know, you probably also notice that when you go through a set of skills that the uh, consolidation, um, and plasticity is really high because when you wake, you know, two days later, whenever, when you go to do it again, you'll find that a skill that you, was naive session before actually flows really, really well the sessions after. And that's mm -hmm. of, um, there's an effect of um, CMAX on NMDA and uh, glutamate, glutamate regulation. So the excitability in the brain and it protects those neurons from excitotoxicity um, by stabilizing these MD, uh, NMDA receptors 
And those are actually what's vital for uh, memory consolidation and plasticity. So it's uh. really, it's a really neat compound. Um, and like you said, it's not something you would utilize for, for street drugs. You actually, you, you, you know, it's not something for rack. It's, it, it's something that you would have to notice over time by practice skills where, whether it being motor skills or cognitive skills that, you know, you're getting a little sharper as you go along and you're actually able to remember things better over time, but you'd have to, you know, either journal or obviously, you know, log your workouts, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't know, I'm going to guess and assume that it's probably pretty decent as a study aid, but since studying is more like, you know, looking at a book, not as much movement motor patterning. I don't know if I would, I don't know if I'd recommend it for that. I would rather just save it for uh, actual physical motor learning because um, with the spatial effects of it, that's where your body is in space, kinesthetic awareness. I really think it has a really high value there and right tool for the right job. There's other things that you can use to study, like book learning stuff. But I, I don't, I mean, what do you think? Well, I mean, it's, it's funny because the, all the effects are, you know, um, in line with, with book learning. My biggest um, caveat, the caveat to this, you know, to be utilizing for that is that book learning is a chronic condition that you do over and over and over again over your lifetime. And, and you don't want to be relying on, you know, snorting a peptide. Oh, yeah. <laughs> every time, you know, and, and, and modulating <laughs> dopamine and doing all those things every time, you know, you studied because it can become a psychological crutch. Whereas, like you mm. said, motor learning and motor consolidation, um, it, there's a much better feedback system for it because you either can do a movement or you can't.